about intermittent fasting, my journey, and how to help you reach and meet your weight loss goals. What's going on, everybody? My name is Ryan Johnson from Intermittent Fasting with Ryan. Over the last year, I've lost 60 pounds following an intermittent fasting routine, and I've been able to maintain the weight loss for over three months now. If you're new here and interested in sustainable weight loss tips and strategies, be sure to click subscribe now. Hey, so again, in today's video, I'm gonna answer your questions about intermittent fasting. So if you're joining me on the live stream, thanks a lot, and if you have any questions, please leave those in the live chat and I'm gonna to get to each and every one of those. And if you're watching on the replay, go ahead and leave any questions that you have in the comments below and I'm gonna go back and I'll answer each and every one of those questions. Uh, so before the live stream today, I asked uh, people to send in their questions and I'm gonna jump right into some of these uh, questions, try to get to as many as I can. Uh, I'm here for about 50 minutes. Um, I'm gonna answer as many of these as I can, jump into some of the ones that people had sent uh, prior to the live stream. And the first question that I got was, can I change my fasting times? And I see this question a lot, and the short answer to that is yes, you can absolutely change your fasting times. That is one of the biggest benefits of intermittent fasting is the flexibility that you have to have the intermittent fasting meet your life's schedule and meet your needs. Um, the reality is there's a lot of different weight loss strategies out there. And if you've come to intermittent fasting for the same reason that I did, and the same reason that a lot of people come to intermittent fasting is for the weight loss benefits. Um, the reality is there's a lot of different ways to lose weight out there. And the one that is going to work best is the one that you can stick with. Adherence is the biggest determining factor of success when following a weight loss strategy. And one of the reasons that intermittent fasting works so well for so many people is it's easy to adhere to. And that goes back to, can you change your fasting times? You absolutely can. So if you have a special event coming up and um, you want to fast longer uh, to lead up to that special event so that you can get more calories in, you can do that. You know, if you normally do 16 hour fast, um, you can change it up just for a single day and that's going to be fine. A good example of what I do is every Friday night we have pizza. Um, so generally on Fridays, I do anywhere between a 20 and a 23 hour fast going into pizza night because I know I'm generally going to eat about 2000 calories worth of pizza. So I'll change my fasting times to account for that. The other can be said for if you have a family event or something coming up on the weekends and you want to have breakfast or brunch with your family, you can adjust for that day and then you just jump right back into your regular fasting schedule. So there's no downside to changing your fasting schedule. That's completely normal. Now, the other thing that I'll say with that is one of the things that I recommend is the way that you can stick with intermittent fasting long term is that you don't focus on building too many habits at once. Uh, so if you're just new to intermittent fasting, the thing that I recommend is you stick to your fasting times for the first few weeks, and that's just until your body gets through that, adapt that adaptation phase. So once you start intermittent fasting, the first week or two, um, really through the first three weeks, your body will go through some changes. You will have some hunger pains, some things like that. And um, once your body has gotten used to skipping breakfast, it adjusts and it becomes much easier um, to go without the food. But for those first few weeks, I do recommend you stick to your schedule. That's just until you have the habit formed. But after that point, intermittent fasting is very flexible and there's no harm if you change your fasting times up. Generally, what my week looks like is I'm gonna fast for 16 hours for two days. I'll generally do probably two days at 18 hours. Um, I'll do a few days at 20 hours and then about once every 10 days um, I'm not going to fast about once every week and a half I'll only do essentially I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up and I'll eat breakfast all right so let's see we've got some questions coming in uh, the first question is uh, I need to lose 72 pounds that I regained during quarantine got the weight loss surgery um, but what is the most effective for me to lose weight quickly so the best fasting times um, is the time again adherence is the biggest determining factor of success so what I recommend that everybody starts with is the 16 8 
Um, so that's 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating. Now, for me, that looked like I stopped eating at 8 p.m. at night and I would start eating at noon the next day. But you can change that based off of what your schedule looks like. Um, so a 16-8 is a great method um, for weight loss. And with that, uh, you do need to watch how much and what you are eating um, because you still could, in a 16-hour eating window, you still can eat more than is your caloric deficit. So weight loss is ultimately about being in a caloric deficit. So I recommend uh, that you count calories to see where you're at. Again, I don't recommend you do that on the first day. Don't take on too much too quickly. Um, but once you're about a month into intermittent fasting, start counting your calories. Um, and going back to your uh, point about losing weight quickly, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna be different than everybody else on the internet. I'm not going to promise you quick weight loss. And the reason for that is to expect to lose weight quickly is setting yourself up for failure. And this is how a huge part of weight loss is the mental component. And I know that because I've struggled with my weight my whole life. And I have, my, I have done yo-yo diets I've lost the same 40 to 60 pounds more times than I can count. Um, but when you change your mindset about, hey, listen, we need to do this slow because we need to do this forever. So intermittent fasting is great for that. Um, find something that you can stick to and know that um, there will be missteps along the way. But the great thing about it is, you know, you, you just get back on and you keep going. So uh, I would say start with the 16-8 method of fasting and stick with that for a month or two and then make adjustments. If you're not seeing the weight loss you want to um, in a two months time period, that's where we should go ahead and start making adjustments. But the reality is if you were to only lose a few pounds a month, but you kept it off and kept going, you know, over the course of a year or two, you're going to be where you want. I use this analogy a lot. If I could snap my finger, let me try that again. If I could snap my finger and you could lose all of the weight that you wanted to lose and you could be at your goal weight and you would be there tomorrow, but two years from now, you had a 95% chance of gaining all that weight back plus some, would you do that? Or if it took you two years to get to your goal weight, but at the end of that time, you were you would stay there for the rest of your life, you would do that, which would you choose? Lose it all tomorrow, but two years from now have a 95% chance of gaining it all back or taking two years to get to your goal weight, but keeping it off forever and really, weight loss is so much about the mentality. So that's what, you know, I would just encourage you with that. Um, you've got this, you're going to do great. Um, and I see that you had the weight loss surgery, which I have so many uh, members of my family that have gotten that done. My mom got it done. There's a lot, um, but that's not a cure all. You still, there's still, um, you know, some things that you have to adjust to your lifestyle, but intermittent fasting is a great tool uh, to be able to stick to, but I would just encourage you to take a long-term approach and uh, just here to pat you on the back and say, you've got this, keep going. Every day, we're not gonna be perfect. Uh, we just need to try to be a little better. Uh, so let's see, got another question coming in. Uh, what protein is best for feeling full? I remember you talking about it before. Hey, so the uh, best protein to feel full is what's called a casein protein. Um, don't ask me to spell it because I definitely grew up in the uh, the spell check age. It's casein protein, C-A-E-S-I-N, something like that. Um, so casein protein, um, it breaks down slower in your stomach. So when you have casein um, towards the end of your feeding window, it's going to help you to feel fuller longer. And there's two different ways um, that you can take casein protein. There is casein protein powder. Um, and there's also, uh, Derek, I know you've got the uh, fast full bars um, that has the casein protein in it as well. 
um, but that's that slow digesting protein. The opposite of that is a whey protein. A whey protein breaks down quicker. Uh, that's why they recommend generally a whey protein is good post-workout. Um, so whey protein, because it breaks down quicker, it gets absorbed quicker, but casein is what you're looking for when you're looking for that slow uh, absorbing protein. So let's see, we got another question roll in. Uh, Kristen, hi from Minnesota. Do we need to take electrolytes? And if so, do we need to take it while fasting or eating window? And does it need to be non-flavored? Been intermittent fasting since um, December. Hold on. Uh, so doing 18 hour fast. So uh, as far as electrolytes go, um, my personal experience with it is I don't take any during my fasting period. Now there are some people that do and one of the things that you need to look at for whether or not you should supplement your electrolytes during your fast is whether or not you're having headaches. Um, really at about the 13 to 16 hour mark you start getting headaches into your fast, that can be a sign that you have an electrolyte imbalance. And if that's the case, you can take some electrolytes during your fast. Um, there are a few different brands that you can look up on Google, things that are intermittent fasting approved electrolytes, um, as well as, you know, a big one that is just a standard thing is pink Himalayan sea salt. You can put some pink Himalayan sea salt, uh, whether it be in your coffee, your black coffee, or in your water. Um, so you can take some of that pink Himalayan sea salt during your fasting window. Now, me personally, I do a lot of um, salt on my food during my feeding window. So that I think is probably one of the reasons that I don't necessarily experience the electrolyte imbalance is I am taking a lot of salts and I just prefer um, to salt my food a lot. So if you ever go back and watch any of those week of eating videos that I'm doing, um, I don't know, I've just been on an avocado kick lately. Uh, the last few weeks I have been eating a ton of avocados, went to the grocery store today and picked up like five avocados and I picked up some guacamole because the avocados weren't ripe yet, but I salt that stuff like crazy. Um, so uh, you can do electrolytes during your fast or during your feeding window. Um, but one of the things that I would look at um, for when you need to do it during your fasting window is if you're having those headaches uh, during your fasting time. That could be a sign of either dehydration or an electrolyte imbalance. So if you're drinking plenty of water and still getting some of those headaches, um, then maybe look at doing an electrolyte supplement during your fast. Otherwise, you can just uh, make sure you're salting your food good during your feeding window. Let's see, so let me scroll up. Got a few other questions here. Let's see, uh, do you exercise with intermittent fasting? So I do exercise with intermittent fasting. Uh, again, like I talk about, uh, I believe in a stair-step approach. Um, so what does that mean? It means as because we're taking a long-term approach, as we build one habit, we move on and build the next habit and the next habit. And if we fall off on a habit, well, then we just go back one rung. Um, but so you shouldn't intermittent fast, calorie count, change your diet and exercise all in the first week. Um, exercise is probably the second or third um, habit I'd recommend. So I personally exercise, uh, I have been doing for the last probably five or six months, um, weightlifting one to two days per week. Um, my weight has been fairly steady over the last two to three months. I want to build a muscular physique. Um, so I am changing up my routine and I'm adding in a few more exercise sessions throughout the week. And, um, that is something that I generally do when fasted. Uh, that's another question that I get a lot is should I exercise fasted or during my eating window? And the reality is you should exercise whenever you have time and it fits in your schedule. Yes, there is some science that backs up exercising fasted. You get some added benefits with, but if doing it fasted is preventing you from committing to it, it's much better for you to stick to an exercise routine that you can commit to even if that happens to be during your feeding window, but exercising and intermittent fasting goes great together. Uh, so let's see, uh, should you close your eating window a few hours before you go to sleep? Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know the best answer to that question, um, but with that being said, um, I can tell you what I do, and that is I generally close my eating window about an 
hour to an hour and a half before I go to bed. And that's with the caveat of this. Um, if I have a big meal, sometimes I'll have a big meal at like four or five in the afternoon, like just really go all out, have dessert and everything. Sometimes if I'm having a really big meal, well then I'll close my eating window early. But generally I'm going to bed um, because I wake up between some mornings I wake up at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning to go to work. Um, but generally I'm waking up by five every morning. So I try to go to bed by nine o'clock and I stop eating around eight. Um, and I try to eat a little closer to going to bed um, only because that prevents me from midnight snacking, which is a big downfall of mine. I love to snack at night. So I have found if I eat my bigger meals a little closer to bed, probably within that hour and a half, two hours max, sometimes hour, hour and a half before I go to bed, that prevents me from wanting to snack um, as I'm curling up in bed watching, you know, something on my phone or on the TV. Um, and I haven't seen any downsides because I'm going to fast. Generally, if I push my eating window out later till 8 p.m., and I'm doing 18 hour fast, I'm not eating until two o'clock the next day anyway. So the thing about you shouldn't eat right before you go to bed doesn't affect you as much when you're intermittent fasting because you're gonna have all those hours on the back end after you wake up. So because I close my eating window at 8 p.m., um, even if I go to sleep at 8.39, I'm gonna wake up at five in the morning and not eat until noon or two. So even if there was a little bit of a downside of eating right before I went to bed, that was negated by the fact that I had seven or eight hours of my day where I was active and had no food in my system. And that's when I'm burning fat. Uh, again, just some of the power of intermittent fasting. Hey, so if you're enjoying this video, um, do me a favor, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're joining on the live stream, if you have any questions, please again, feel free to leave those in the chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, uh, leave any questions in the comments below and I'll be sure to go back and answer each and every one of those. All right, so we'll get a few more questions here. Let's see. Hello, I started my fasting journey on September of 2020. Lost 17 pounds until January, but got stuck in the scale since then. It does not move. It's kind of frustrating. Hey, so I have a question for you. Just if you could answer this, it would help me. Um, so I see you lost 17 pounds. Um, how much more do you have to lose to get to your goal weight? Um, that'll kind of help me. Uh, answer that a little more specifically and while I'm waiting on that answer I'm gonna go ahead and get back to one of these that I got beforehand so um, with the question about you've lost 17 and kind of stalled let me know how much more weight you have to go to get to your goal weight um, and then I'll kind of tailor the answer because uh, it's different if you still have another 30 pounds to go or if you have you know 10 pounds to go I'll kind of tailor my answer there so just let me know in the chat how many more pounds you have to go to reach your goal weight um, one of the questions that I had come in is what is the best exercise for fat loss? Um, and so I see the answer to your question. We'll, we'll get back to this one afterwards. Um, but the, back to this live question is, uh, so 32 pounds to go. So because you've still got a, a look, you've come up to close to your halfway point. Um, what I would recommend is you're going to make some you're going to continue to make some small changes uh, to your plan um, because really once you once you get to those last 10 to 15 percent that's where you're going to have to make bigger and bigger changes to see a smaller result and here's what i mean um, when you are first starting out you only have to make one small change and you can see a big result if you have a lot to lose but as you get closer to your goal weight it's going to take a bigger change to see a smaller result whether it be on the scale or in your physique and that's just kind of the way it goes because our bodies get closer to kind of their set point um now i'm right there with you i haven't lost any weight um here in about three months so i am increasing my exercise I was doing one to two days a week. Now I'm up in that to about five days a week. That's one of the things that I'm doing. So there's a few things that I would recommend if you're in a plateau. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you are in fact in a plateau. And 
uh, after this video, I'll leave a card here up on the screen. I did a video on four things you need to measure in addition to your weight to verify whether or not you're in a plateau. And those four things are your weight itself. You should track that. You should track your measurements. That's your, whether it be your waist, your bust, your arms, your legs, measure those and get them in inches or uh, centimeters if you're on metric system. Uh, you should take progress photos and you should have one piece of clothing that you always wear um, to verify whether or not the things are working. So, oh, so you, you said here you notice you fit in a smaller size of pants and dress. So because you're measuring those four things, weight, photos, measurements, and clothing, if you see progress in any of those four areas, you're not truly in a plateau. Now your weight loss may have slowed, but we're not looking for fast results. We're looking for forever results. So if you can wear a pair of pants this week that you couldn't wear three weeks ago, but the scale has not changed, you are making progress and keep doing what you have been doing because we don't want to make too many changes too early because if you make too many drastic changes before you have plateaued, you only have so many levers that you can pull to make changes. So if you pull those levers too early, when you get down to that last 15, 20%, you're not gonna have any more levers to pull. So I would say because your pants fit better, even if the scale hasn't changed, keep doing what you're doing. Now, with all that being said, once you get to a point where those four areas, you're not seeing progress in them, um, the first thing that I would recommend you change is the types of food that you are eating. I don't wanna change the number of calories that you're eating um, because if you drop your calories too low, your body will adjust its calorie set point. And again, that's just a game that you can't go lower and lower because eventually you won't be able to go any lower. So what I mean by that is try to eat more whole foods and just do simple substitutions. So for me, that looked like I would change my uh, fried chicken tenders for rotisserie chicken. So the first thing I would recommend is you switch out your types of foods. Uh, the next thing I would recommend is you change your fasting time. So I see you're doing 18 hours. So maybe you try three days a week doing 20 hour fasts. Um, and then because you're already exercising four days a week, the next thing that I would recommend um, is you may, is finally you start to look at your uh, co total calories uh, consumed for the day. But again, I don't recommend you do any of that stuff until you are truly in a plateau and you won't know that that's the case until you start tracking those four things. And again, as long as you're seeing progress in any of those four areas, your weight, your measurements, your progress photos, and your pair of uh, clothing that you try on continually, when you're not seeing progress in any of those areas, that's when you're in a plateau, when you don't see progress over three weeks. Hey, so again, if you're uh, enjoying this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're joining me on the live stream, if you have any questions, please leave those in the chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, leave any questions that you have in the comments below. All right, so one of the other questions that I got was best exercise for fat loss. Um, now the best exercise for fat loss, I'm gonna give this answer in two parts. The first part of that is the best one for fat loss is the one that you can stick to um, because if there is an amazing uh, exercise routine that gets you incredible results, but you don't enjoy it, therefore you don't do it consistently, well then that is not the best exercise for you for fat loss. Um, but then there are some methods and modes of exercise that are um, superior to others for fat loss if you can stick, um, if you can stick them. If you don't have a preference and are able to kind of decide what, how you wanna be working out and enjoy different kinds of exercise, um, I always recommend um, weight training, resistance training, something that's going to build muscle. Now, whether you're a guy or a girl, um, building muscle is going to help you for fat loss because it's going to improve your muscle tone and add muscle to your body, even if it's just a little bit. And by adding a little bit 
of muscle, um, you're able to increase your basic metabolic rate. That's the rate at which your body burns calories. And the reason that that's good for fat loss is because if I could take you and have you burn uh, 2,000 calories in a day, but then you were to add a little bit of muscle and you were to burn just with your body at rest 2,050 calories, that means over time you're going to burn more calories and if your food remains consistent, eventually you'll be in that calorie deficit and your body will start burning fat for fuel. So um, one of the best exercises for fat loss is resistance training, something that's gonna add muscle to your frame. Um, but with that being said, we're all about long-term weight loss and long-term transformation. It takes some time for you to build the muscle up, but you know I always advocate for resistance training. Now, I'm not saying that cardio is not good. I don't prefer cardio, so I don't do a lot of cardio, but that goes back to what I was saying before. The best exercise is the one that you can stick to. Um, it doesn't matter what science says um, because you know, we're not looking f for the best answer. We all know what to do. The reality is, can we actually do it? So when it comes to exercise, I say find what you love to do and do that. I enjoy bodybuilding type workouts. That's why those are the ones that I'm doing most of the time. Um, it's not because science says they're the best. It's because I enjoy doing them. And the ones that you enjoy are the ones that you're going to stick to uh, consistently. So I had a question come in. Um, are probiotics good to take at a fasted state or should you take it after you eat? Uh, generally, so I don't take a lot of probiotics. Actually, I probably say I don't take any probiotics. Um, so I'm not going to take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, I would recommend you check out Thomas DeLauer. He's on YouTube. He has a lot of great science-backed information. Um, but I think generally probiotics is something that you want to be taking with your meals. Um, but I don't have the best answer for you. I will say this though, before you research and look into that, um, just know that like with everything that I'm talking about, the best thing to do is adherence. So if somebody says that probiotics are best to take while you're fed, but you find it easier to take fasted, do what works for you because what's going to be best is that you find the plan that is most sustainable for you. Um, don't let the intermittent fasting police or anybody tell you that you're doing it wrong uh, because the best way to do intermittent fasting is the way that works best uh, for you. Because again, we're not looking to lose weight fast. We're looking to lose weight forever. All right. So um, another question that I got was how to get back on track. Uh, somebody was coming off a of vacation and they said, hey, what's the best way to get back on track um, after you've been off for a while? And trust me, I know what this looks like. Um, I went on vacation four or five weeks ago and I didn't fast. I think we went for seven days and five or six of the days I didn't fast. Um, and the best way that I recommend that you get back on track um, depending on how long you've been fasting for, is to start back at the beginning in the idea of you don't need to do it all today. If prior to you going off track, if you were fasting consistently, you were eating healthy, you were getting your exercise in, you were tracking calories, if you were doing all of those things before you went off track and then life happened, because we all know that life happens, um, and you fall off track, don't give yourself the added stress of picking up right back where you left off um, because you may not be able to do that. And when you fall short of that, the mental burden that you put on yourself for falling short is much worse than starting back slow. So um, give yourself a little grace. That's one of the things that I have learned over this last year is I used to be so hard on myself. Like I am, I was a binge eater. I still am a binge eater. Um, but whenever I was following a diet or exercise strategy, that's one of the reasons my weight always yo-yoed and roller coasters is because whenever I would go off plan, 
I would get so hard on myself and I wouldn't be able to pick right back up where I left off, therefore I wouldn't pick back up at all. So if you go off track with intermittent fasting, I recommend you start back with one healthy habit at a time. You know, it doesn't matter whether you've been off track for two days or if you've been off track for two months. When you start back, just start back with the fasting. Don't worry about doing everything perfectly because we have the rest of our lives to do this. So start with just fasting. Hit your fasting window consistently. Once you've hit your fasting window consistently for a few weeks, then reintroduce tracking your calories because you have to know where you're at. Um, then reintroduce exercise. So I'd say the best way to get back on track um, is kind of how you got started in the first place is show yourself a little grace, show yourself some time because it's better that you take two weeks to get back on track and a month from now you are right back to where you picked up than to fall off track, try to start everything back on that next day. It's too much. You fall off and then two months from now you're still off track because you couldn't pick right back up where you left off. So don't worry about picking right back up where you leave off. Um, lead with grace. Give yourself, you know, the, uh, give yourself the ability and the understanding that you're human, um, that you don't have to be perfect and start back a little at a time because to say that we're never going to fall off is that doesn't happen. Um, I binged crazy hard this last Sunday. I had a bunch of pancakes with peanut butter. I didn't fast. Um, to think that we're never going to mess up is just, it's ludicrous. Um, but the things that we can work on are understanding that, that it's going to happen, understanding why it happened, and taking a long-term approach to getting back on track. Um, so that was one of the questions that I had come in. Again, if you're joining me in the live stream, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to leave those in the live chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, um, leave a comment below, which leads me to the question of the day. Do me a favor, leave in the comments below and let me know how long have you been fasting for and what do you do when you fall off a track? So, um, for me, I try to uh, get back on with the fasting and try to do any time that I've gotten off track. The thing that I do every time is I just try to do a 16 hour fast. I don't try to go crazy. Hey, if I had a bad day yesterday, if I had a bad week, my first fast back is always a 16 hour fast. And that's just to kind of reset. I don't try to overcompensate uh, for a cheat or a binge. I just try to get back on with a 16 hour fast, but let me know in the comments below, uh, what do you do or what have you done in the past? Um, when you've gotten off track to get back on track. Um, and then one of the other questions, one of the other questions that I got was, is it okay to have carbs while intermittent fasting? So, um, if you have watched any of my stuff before, or even if you haven't, um, I don't advocate for any specific style of eating. Um, and that's because everybody is different. Uh, if I were to prescribe uh, to you the best things and the best way to eat, uh, the reality is everybody is different and everybody enjoys different things. Um, so a lot of people do keto with intermittent fasting. I am not a proponent of that. Um, I do advocate for tracking your calories. I don't say that you need to run a steep calorie deficit um, because that's not what intermittent fasting is about. I do recommend you track your calories so that if you ever do get to a plateau, you have to know where you're at if you're gonna make adjustments. But as far as types of foods go, I don't restrict and I don't recommend that you restrict any types of foods. Now that's not to say that you may develop a personal preference for certain macronutrients. So for me personally, um, I don't like to have carbs uh, when I break my fast because I do have that uh, sugar crash a little later on uh, if I break my fast with carbs, but I do love carbs. I love cake, I love ice cream, I love pizza. Uh, I just try to have that stuff for dinner um, and not earlier on in my feeding window. And I also try not to end my fast or end my feeding window with carbs because I have learned for me personally, if I have a lot of carbs as the last thing I eat, 
Um, I generally wake up more hungry the following day. Um, so I try to fit my carbs in probably the last two thirds of my feeding window. Generally it's um, dinner time or late lunch um, is when I try to have my carbs. But as far as what types of foods that you can have on intermittent fasting, any types of foods uh, you can have. Again, I do recommend that you track them. I use my fitness pal. I'm on my fitness pal. If you want to send me a friend request, my username is IF with Ryan. That's IF with Ryan. If you send me a friend request on there, you can see everything that I eat. Um, I have tracked my calories on my fitness pal since last May. So you can go back 11 months and kind of see uh, everything that I'm eating. Um, speaking of which, I am trying something new this week. I am. I'm not trying keto, uh, but I have reduced my carbs uh, this week. Um, and again, that has not been the case for about a year now, but uh, my weight has been about the same for the last two or three months now. And I am trying a uh, higher protein, higher fat. Um, I'm three days into it now. I'll report back uh, here in a few weeks and let you know uh, what I find out. So. Hey, thanks again for joining me today. Um, if you got anything out of this video, please do me a favor and be sure to hit that like button. Um, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And if you're getting anything out of my videos, probably the biggest thing that I would ask um, is if you would share my videos whenever you find it appropriate. If there's somebody um, that is asking you about intermittent fasting or if there's ever a point that it makes sense for you to share the videos, I would ask that you do that if you're getting anything out of these. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. And if you're new here and interested in intermittent fasting or getting started on your own intermittent fasting journey, I'm gonna leave some videos on the screen now. I encourage you to check those out. And remember, we're not looking to lose weight fast. We're looking to lose weight forever. Thanks again. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, and I'll see you in the next video.